Good morning. Welcome to Fiesta Grande Community Church. My name is Pastor Ron. We're so honored that you chose to join us today. May God's blessing be upon you today. In just a few moments, we will begin the worship service. Blessed be the name. this morning. Amen. Amen. Good to have you all here this morning and with your smiley faces. Some of you may not have smiley faces. Oh, I got you. There you go. Even back there. Smiley faces. Stand with us this morning as we sing together Beautiful One. The scripture says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. Oh, 
soul must sing. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day we have outside, that beautiful time that we can come together and worship you. I pray that you just speak through us, speak to us this morning, each one of us, about our, our needs and give us encouragement and comfort and wisdom today. And I pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, announcements. You did not see the announcements beforehand, so I'm not going to repeat them all. Okay, you got to watch the watch the slides. I spent many, 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 many hours putting that together, so you got to watch the slides and see what the dates are, because we have a lot of stuff coming up this season. We are just starting up the season, and we really need to. Uh, uh, you need to look at the dates that we have for each and every month. Something happening every single month. So, so look and come and expecting God to come in a mighty way in different ways too. Amen. Um, I have a couple of cards that came to me. A couple of cards that came to me. Some thanks. And let me read them to you. And then we'll put those over on the, on the table for you to look at too. But uh, here's one that says Fiesta Grande Community Church. Thank you all for thinking and praying for me and my family. I received your card today with your message and heart. That's very special, Sandy Appledore. So, and then from Sunshine Acres, one of the uh, one of the places we uh, uh, help to sponsor up in uh, Mesa. We just recently sent them a gift, and they they came back and said. In appreciation for Fiesta Grande Community Church, we're so thankful for your gift that is helping hurting children that need a loving home. We recently took five new children, and they seem happy to be here. She says, uh, uh, and this came from Carol, the president, says, uh, Jermaine knew he was getting a new roommate, and, her, and their house mother shared a note that Jermaine wrote him. Hey, little brother, I will be your roommate and I, I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to help you out on stuff so you do not get lost or stuff like that. This side of the room, this side is your room. This, yeah, this side is your room and this is where you can be yourself. Don't be shy and scared. You are safe and loved. Isn't that special? Somebody's sharing that uh, there. So they said, thank you. We're so thankful for your support in giving these children a, san a chance at a better life. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, I went to see Rosie yesterday, and I talked to her daughter, uh, Sherry. And Sherry asked me to ask you all that if you are in need, uh, Rosie's going to be not being able to be home for a while so we uh, there's a lot of food and things over there that might spoil so if you're if you're need or you know somebody that's in need of some things out of the refrigerator or some things out of the cabinet uh, uh, canned goods or whatever you come and see me after the service today and I will direct you on how to go over there and get that sherry will be there today and possibly part of it in the morning but if not, we can do it later. So come and talk to me later. I know she's got, probably got stuff in the fridge that it's going to spoil if we don't get it out of there, okay? She is, uh, Rosie's not doing very well, but it's, you know, at, at any of our ages, when we have a broken bone or, or have some kind of ailment, it takes us a while to recover more than those young people, right? Yeah, don't you envy the young people sometimes when that when that happens? <laughs> okay, I think that is it of the announcements. You saw all the rest of them, <clears throat> didn't you? This uh, first song we're going to do today is uh, uh, "I Saw the Light," and Hank Williams wrote that back in the '50s, and it became more of a uh, country song too. But it's a good gospel song. So if you want to. Stand or just remain seated there. We're going to sing, I Saw the Light. I went there and so I 
Your soul. 
God, this, uh, this message, although it is <laughs> meant for me, I pray that you just uh, help each one to, to know that this uh, message of the hour, this scripture reading, everything that's done is, is to uplift you and to bless you and to, and to uh, worship you this morning and all that's said and done. God, we, we, we look to you for our joy and for our encouragement and for our love and through the grace that you provide for us and you give us hope of eternal life. And I ask God that you just continue to be with us. Encourage us each and every day, I pray. And be in the service, I pray, in a special way. And we'll ask these things in your precious, precious name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Well, I've asked uh, Sharon to come up and read the uh, scripture of the hour from uh, Psalms. So Sharon, if you would come up and... that I could 
conference call with people and had the buttons and all that stuff. And it's so neat. Oh, I love that thing. And then we moved into the first cell phone. Remember those old cell phones? Actually, there's one before that, the one that had this in a little bag. Looked like something that came from the army or something. It was in a big bag and it had a, you know, one with a, yeah. And, and so we had those big cell phones. And then we had the flip phones, right? Had the flip phones, those are so neat. And my newer version of the flip phone I had until just a couple of years ago, by the way. And then that one there, I had one just like that, that flip phone. And my kids and grandkids said, Grandpa, you got to just come up to the, to the 2000s, I guess. Come up to the next generation. And so I decided to get me a new cell phone. Woohoo! Well, actually the one before this one. And you can do so many things with a cell phone. Why do you still call for the phone? Oh, I have no idea. It's the old guy I'd be. So, so then we have the cell phones that have the, the, uh, all the apps on it that you can do different things on and, and search for things, including, you know, setting your thermostat and all that stuff. And then there's now the one that you've probably seen that, that folds again, but it folds like this, so it gives you a double screen. So it looks like a bigger, like an iPad now, uh, because it's bigger now. And, and it's fancy. We've got some friends of ours in Colorado that have one of those. Technology changes all the time. All the time. Isn't that? So, but, but you know, we as Christians, are we surviving or are we thriving on, on things that happen all around us? You know, Facebook is so good, except when we use it badly. Internet is good. I found all those pictures online. I found all those pictures online. So that was really good. But if you don't use it right, the Internet's bad. Anything that we have in life that has given us more ease of doing things more quick, quickly, quickly, um, it can, if it's used the wrong way, it's not right for us. Amen? So are we surviving as a Christian around us or are we thriving around us? I read a, I read a story and, and you may have, I don't know if you've seen the, even the movie, but there's a gentleman by the name of Aaron Ralston. There was an article about him many year, a few years ago. And Aaron Ralston became famous when he escaped certain death by cutting off his arm after becoming trapped by a boulder in American wilderness. If you've seen the movie, there was a movie, you know, of course, everything that happens, they make a movie out of it. And he, the, his story is told through this movie. So if you haven't seen it, I look through some of the clips of it and it can be a little graphic at times. Well, they can make any movie graphic. But uh, in, in 2003, Ralston was hiking alone in the Blue John Canyon in the Canyonlands National Park in southeast uh, Utah. While he was descending into the remote and exceedingly narrow canyons, a boulder fell and trapped him, uh, trapped his right arm under the boulder. Now, as I was watching the trailer on that, it was pretty graphic, but his arm was trapped. And, and he couldn't move this big boulder out of the way. So for five days he survived off of what he had packed for water and for snacks, hoping someone would find him. Now, as I looked at the picture, it's a crevice. It's not just rocks around, but it's actually a crevice that he fell down into, so it would be hard for somebody to see him. But he was hoping somebody would find him. So trouble was, not only was the spot remote, but he ha also hadn't told anyone where he was going. Dumb thing to do. Realizing he may never be found and running out of supplies, he was forced to amputate his arm by cutting through the bone using his multi-tool that included a knife. Could you do that? After feeling him, freeing himself, he began a seven-mile walk back to his truck during his journey, a family discovered him and alerted authorities. 
He lost 40 pounds during this ordeal and somehow miraculously avoiding bleeding to death. He now continues to mountaineer. <laughs> Don't know why. He now continues uh, to also be a motivational speaker. Was he surviving or was he thriving? He decided that instead of just plain surviving, he was going to die eventually. So he needed to cut loose and thrive and get out of there because there's more to life than laying in that uh, in that canyon with a rock on top of him. In Romans 8, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen? Amen? No, I'm not getting any amen, so this may last until noon today. Amen. Good. Good. There is a movie that was a few years ago also called Castaway. Remember Castaway? And I've got a little clip here that I wanted you to look at. survive like he did finding coconuts finding things to survive until somebody finds you that's surviving got to get along got to eat got to drink got to have something over my head in the storms that's what happens even in Christian life we need to you know we may just survive I'm a Christian now God saved me from a life of sin and I'm just going to survive and just just make it day by day you know but yet you see in this movie that he decided after a while nobody was going to rescue him and so he needed to 
to thrive. He needed to do more than just survive. He needed to get out of there because he, he had that little watch that he set for Memphis time. And he had his girlfriend or fiance's picture on it. I need to keep going. I'm going to work at it. I'm going to build me a raft. I'm going to make it with that tape. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go through the storms of life. I'm going to get out of there and make it someday to, to where I intentionally plan to be. I'm going to make it to heaven. I'm going to work at it. Amen? I'm not going to just survive anymore. I'm going to thrive. So what is the difference between surviving and, ooh, what's the difference in trying to push a button that you're not supposed to push? So what's the difference between surviving and thriving? Surviving is a grim struggle. You're holding on, white-knuckled, just barely getting by. Do we do that as a Christian sometimes? Every single day I wake up and I get me a cup of coffee and I sit there and I think, oh, I got so many things to do today. I got to clean the yard. I got to clean the house. I got to do all these things. And then tomorrow I got another honeydew list. Who was it that told me that you got a honeydew list together? Anyway, um, You've got things to do every single day, and you just kind of survive. I'm just getting along. And we do that as a, as a Christian sometimes. Thriving is living and thinking abundantly. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Amen? Amen. Surviving is kind of a drag. Just staying alive. There's a movie about that, but I won't go into that. But it's a drag. Thriving is joyous and infectious. People want to do the things, same thing you're doing. If I was on that island, I would want to get off of there and I would build a raft and I would pedal and I'd, you know, no matter what happens, I'm going to make it because I've got a goal in mind. I'm going to make it to heaven, folks, no matter what it takes. I'm going to work at it and I'm going to find out what it takes to make it to heaven. I'm going to find out. I'm going to read this from Genesis to Revelation. I'm going to know exactly what God has planned for me and what I need to do to get there. Because that's my goal in life. I may build myself a raft here on earth. We, need, we had that in July, right? We had to build a raft. But I'm going to build a raft. I'm going to build whatever I need to in, in, in life to make it to heaven. Because I've seen a picture of what heaven's like. I've seen a picture of my Lord. I feel Him each and every day. I know what it is to be a, to live a joyous life, and I'm going to make it. I'm going to thrive off of this life. I'm going to make it interesting. You may not think it's interesting, but I, I'm going to make it fun. Amen. Being a Christian is not boring, is it? No. It's fun. I have no more sin burden on my shoulders to weight me down. I'm free. I'm free indeed. God has saved me and took away that burden. Now I can act crazy and, you know, it's, it's normal. Okay? I can do whatever I need to do to get there because God has blessed me and He loves me. Are you a Christian today? Christian means Christ-like. I was going to bring, and I forgot to do it, I was going to bring a mirror. You ever looked at yourself? Some of us probably don't want to. I do in the morning to kind of, like this morning I was trying to trim my beard. Does it look nice this morning? Okay. So I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm trying to make sure that my little hair is not sticking out. I got it all nice and neat. But have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and, and, and see what God sees? If you looked at this image and said, that is what God's looking at today. Who do I look like? Have you looked in the mirror today and saw what others see? It's not just a face. 
I sure hope that when I'm up here, you're not looking at my face because it would be horrible. It's one of those things that, you know, people scream and holler and run away and kids cry and scream when they, but, but I hope you see up here, Jesus Christ speaking this morning. So when you look at that mirror, do you see, do others see Jesus through you? Or do they see this horrible, horrible thing in the mirror? Do they see that? In 2 Corinthians it says, For we all who have unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image. We are Christ-like. We are Christians. We are made to look and act and think like Jesus Christ. Hmm. The new, the new creation. I have a scripture up here that says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old is gone and the new is here. Are you a new creation that God has made? Or do you get saved and say, Okay, I'm, I'm saved. My burden's all gone. Jesus Christ has saved me and forgiven me my sins and I'm just going to go back and do the same things I did. I'm going to go back to the same friends I had. I'm going to go back doing the same things I've, I've done. I'm going to act like I used to. I'm going to talk like I used to. I'm just going to do everything I used to, but that's okay because God saved me and I'm good for until Jesus comes back. Amen. Hmm. Okay. I don't quite think like that. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. New. When people look at you, they're going to see something totally new. You're not going to want to act like you used to. You're not going to want to talk like you used to. I was in the army. I don't use the same language. It's a different language when you're in the army versus, you know, now. I don't talk the same. I don't act the same. Do you? Is that what people see when they look at you? We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. What do people see when they look at you? When they see the way you act? What do they see? Do they see a pure heart? We read about that in the scripture this morning. Do they see a pure heart? You know what purity is? It's the freedom from all that contamination that was in you. That dirty heart. That dirty mind. It's gone. I'm a new creation. It's not there anymore. There's no more contamination. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall see God. David says in Psalms, he says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Create in me, Lord, your heart a new creation a new creature then we need to seek the Lord scripture says I seek you with all my heart do not let me stray from your commands Lord help me each and every day not to stray from you help me to seek what is good lead me to the correct scripture through my devotions that I need today. I went over to uh, to the uh, Oasis and was talking to Candace yesterday. I don't know why I never thought of this before. It must be old age. But I'm there and I said, oh, do you have a daily devotional that you use? Well, somebody used to bring those by to me. As a matter of fact, they brought me a whole stack of the devotionals and I would hand them out to the folks. Woo! Guess what? We have a whole stack of them. I'm going to take over there for them, for candidates to pass out. Because we all need daily devotionals. Scripture that speaks to our heart. We need to seek the Lord each and every day. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know any anxious thoughts that I may have. 
Then we also need to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Technology, right? I think, was, I think the technology has a mute on it, but I don't know. Really. So we need to thirst and hunger for righteousness. Have you ever been sitting at home and say, man, I am so hungry for pizza. And a big, tall glass of Diet Coke. I know where I'm going to get that. I'm going to go to Barrow's and get me a big pizza combination all the meat on it. Oh, luscious. Do you seek and hunger after righteousness like that? Do you wake up in the morning thinking, boy, I'm going to have some of that this morning. What scripture is it that I'm going to read this morning? Oh, yeah. This is exactly, thank you, Lord. This is exactly what I needed this morning. I'm filled. I'm filled. It says, blessed are the those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Don't you like to be filled? When I go get pizza, I love to walk away going, oh, I shouldn't eat that much. I should not have ate that much. I feel so full. When I read scripture and God has revealed things to me, man, Lord, thank you, but I feel so full this morning. Could you just save that from tomorrow? Could you say just that one scripture for tomorrow? Because I'm so full now. My mind is ready to explode because you've given me so much stuff in your word. Linda gets so irritated at me, among other things, when we go to a to, to where I love to go and hear somebody preach and, and share the, the word. And as I'm, as I'm listening to them, I'm going, wow, that's neat. I need to take notes. Because eventually I'm going to probably do that as a sermon too. I forget where I put those notes. But, but I, I get so excited because God is filling me with, with things that I need to hear that day. Does he do that with you each day? Does he fill you when you're hungry and thirsting for righteousness? You know, I... I hate to tell you, but one of my one of my pet peeves. I have a bunch of them. I'm like monk almost, but I have a lot of pet peeves. But one of my pet peeves is for people that come to church on Sunday and then walk away and they're through and, until nine o'clock the next Sunday. You know, we as a Christian need to work at being a Christian each and every day. When we walk out of here. There's not a little switch that turns on that says, okay, I walk in the service and I'm a Christian. When I walk out, I flip the switch and now that's off and I'm doing whatever I want to do during the week. I've seen that and that's, that's not what God expects. When we become a Christian, we're a new creation. We're a new creation every single day, man. We're not just one of those that goes fishing on Sunday and that's all I can get in because I'm busy during the week. Okay, we, we just don't go fishing six days a week and then come to church on Sunday. Ooh, it got quiet in here. <laughs> God didn't intend Christianity to be a hobby. It's not a hobby with us. It's not just something that happens on Sunday morning. We come in and we're done for the week. Thank you for filling us, Pastor. Thank you for sharing with us, Pastor. And tomorrow I'm going to go off and do whatever I want to do anyway. Hmm. It's not a Sunday morning religion. Being a Christian is every single day. You got to work at it, folks. When I get to heaven and the book of life comes out and he looks for my name, he's going to find my name and he's going to go, yep. I see all about Ron's life. And that shouldn't take him more than two or three seconds to go through that. But he'll see all the things and he'll go, yep, you've been a good and faithful servant. Enter into the kingdom. Wow. But I can't just sit back here and, and 
what's, what's the theological term, dilly-dally? <laughs> I can't do that. Christian life is an exciting time. Have you ever led somebody to the Lord? Have you ever actually spoke to somebody that was so downhearted? They looked like they were on their last breath. Their shoulders are so hunched down. Sin is getting them down so bad. Things have happened in their life and they can't take it anymore. And they give their heart and life to God. And woe and behold, their shoulders come up. Their chest comes out. They get that smile across their face. And they're happy and joyous. You need to do that every single day of your life. Christ, being a Christian is a joyous adventure. A joyous adventure. Amen? Living for Him can be the best thing in life. So we need to wake up every single day with a purpose. What's your purpose for living? When I go to nursing homes, I hear so many elderly people. I'm young. So it's elderly people at the nursing homes. Oh, I don't know why God doesn't take me now. I'm done. I've done everything. I'm just surviving. Why doesn't God take me? Hey, he ain't done with you yet. Is that good language? I'm sorry, Nancy, I used bad language. I ain't done with you yet. Straighten up. Straighten up and do what you're supposed to do. Win the souls to Christ. Amen? My mom was like that. And she says, I don't know why God didn't take me. And I said, Mom, God ain't done with you yet. And lo and behold, it wasn't long before she was able to have another resident come in, a little a lady come in. She talked to a lady and she accepted Christ into her life. Woo! Folks, it ain't done. You ain't done until you're done. Amen? Get out of bed in this morning. Drink your cup of coffee. Get excited over the Lord. Read your scripture. Get excited of what's happening. And know that when you walk out that door, pray, God, lead me to somebody today that needs a special touch from you. Don't push to go find somebody. I'm going to drive down the street and find somebody. <laughs> I'm going to go find somebody down the street that needs me to talk to them today. And I'm going to... I'm going to stop them and I'm going to tell them all about Jesus. God will lead you to somebody that needs you today. Just be prepared. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as the living sacrifices, holy, un, uh, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Did you hear that? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. That's your job to do each and every day. It's your responsibility. Present yourself as a living sacrifice, and Jesus will lead you to somebody. Your responsibility as a Christian. We need to thrive to walk in the faith. We need to push. We need to work at walking by faith. It's not easy. It is easy. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. If I would think about my, what I think I'm supposed to do in life, it might, it's probably a whole lot different than what God has in plan for me. He has other things planned for me that's that's a lot better than what I have planned for my life. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and shun evil. Then faith also means action. We live by faith, not by sight. Remember he gave the, the, the disciples the words that he says, he says, do not go among the Gentiles, but enter into the town of Samaria's. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel as you go proclaim the message the kingdom of heaven is near heal the sick raise the dead 
cleanse those who have leprosy and drive out demons. Freely you have received, so freely you need to give. That's walking instructions for us. Be confident in what you believe. What do you believe this morning? What do you believe? Paul says, Timothy says, that is why I'm suffering as I am, yet I am not ashamed because I know I have believed and I'm convinced. I know I believe. Jesus Christ today is my Savior. He saves me. He directs me. He guides me. He leads me in all truth. And I'm going to trust Him and have faith in Him. Amen? Put your faith to action. Real quickly here in closing, I know I'm running a little bit over, so don't leave me. I've got one more, one more story. There was once a great pianist who was uh, giving a concert to a large concert hall. When he finished the concert, everyone in the place stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Well, almost everyone. There was one old man on the front row that didn't stand, and but everybody else was on their feet cheering wildly. When the pianist walked off the stage, he was crying. His manager asked him what was wrong, and he said, didn't you see the man on the front row who wasn't standing or wasn't applauding? The manager said, well, sure, I saw him, but that was the only person who wasn't standing and cheering. Why are you worried about that old man? He says, the pianist says, but you don't understand that man was the writer of music that I play tonight. He is the only one who counts. He is the only one who knows what that piece is supposed to stand, uh, sound like. Jesus Christ knows what you were supposed to do. Does he clap and cheer for you? Or does he just sit there while everybody else around, him, around you is cheering? You're not living for others. You're living for Jesus Christ. And he will direct you and guide you and cheer you on and help you and give you wisdom that you need each and every day. Don't just survive. Thrive. Thrive. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the words that you've given us today. Bless us today and help us to not just survive in this life, but totally thrive. Help us to know that all things work together for those that love the Lord. Lord, I know that uh, you have a purpose for each one of us. Direct our paths and plans that you have for us because we know that we'll be better off by following your direction. Help us, Lord, to hunger and thirst for righteousness for you each and every day and to be an example for those around us. That when they look at us, they see Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to spread the joy and the love and the peace and the happiness not just on Sunday morning in church, but every single day of the week. Help us, Lord, I pray, and we give you all the praise. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand together and close in... Oh, I had one more slide. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> don't just survive, thrive. Let's pray again, no. Let's uh, sing together. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Are you glad you're a part of the family of God today? Amen. Amen. Are you glad you're a part of the family of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Boy, like pulling teeth. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain. Cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. We'll go out of here today thriving and thirsting and hungering for righteousness. Amen? Yes, ma'am.
She asked about moving the chairs back to the tables. If you would, please. Thank you. You're dismissed. <laughs>